some are strong in some areas, some are weak in some areas, some are strong in some areas. Some are weak. If you know your area of weakness, the others will complement you. You know the area where you are strong. You complement others with the area you are strong. And that is how the struggle is going to go. That is the part the struggle is taking. Forget about people who are still busy casting and calling names. They are not in the struggle. They don't exist anymore. Any platform you go and you see them, they are busy castigating a fellow behalf, mainly castigating our brother Simon Emma, talking about Simon Emma. You see them, you go to their topic, you see their topic is always Simon Emma. You see them, they, they cannot make a speech without condemning Simon Emma. Even when the Simon Emma has not committed any crime against them, he has not stolen their money, he has not done anything to them. He's just busy focusing on what he's doing, and they are busy gossiping. When you see such platform, don't attack them. Don't comment them. Don't share their videos. Just walk away. Don't scroll down. When you are scrolling, I said scroll, you will always jam them. Once you scroll and you see them, you just scroll out and go where you're going. Look for autopilot platforms where you will get a genuine message. People who are talking about your freedom, what matters. People who are going to tell you a way forward, the next strategy. As you are watching me here, go and check those people. They don't have any strategy. They will tell you that that the one uh, when we say that we're going to match, they say, Why are you matching? Why not? We are not talking about Philom of Mazin again. They say, We are not talking about Philom of Mazin again. Now we're talking about matching. These are ignorant people. These were the same people when we were sitting at home. We were sitting at home supporting all the people in Biafran that are sitting at home to make sure that Mazin Nanakan voice is being heard, to make sure that Mazin Nanakan be released. They were the people who came against the people. They came against the people. They went to the extent of announcing on the Biafra and telling the police to go and arrest Biafra that are sitting at home. But all of a sudden today, as we have passed that stage and we are moving to a different stage, another technique on how to release Martin Nanika, they are still backwards. They are dragging us back. They are dragging us back to begin to talk about things that are irrelevant. They are dragging us back. When we are talking about movement when we are talking about moving forward we are talking about the coming of biafra we are talking about the release of martin and the camp that's what it is release of martin and the will not come from their court it is not going to come from court it is not going to come, going to come from any lawyer or any judge or the imposter that's all it is going to come from you and i the ordinary people what you do, what I do, what I say, that is one of what is going to trigger the coming of Biafra. If you don't do things right, it's not going to happen. That is why we are taking the step we're taking. So don't mind the ignorant people who are making some unnecessary noise and saying things that doesn't matter. We are moving on and we don't have time to begin to gossip or say irrelevant things. Yeah, welcome, my brother, Organilu Biafra. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're welcome. I agree. I'm very glad for this opportunity to be here once again. Mm. You are doing a very wonderful and fantastic work for the restoration of the state of Biafra. I'm very, very grateful. As we are today in the topic, it is now time to take the bull by its turn. It's a very wonderful topic. And I'm also calling other people who are not yet, you know, joining us to also come in. This is a time we are looking into. A lot of things are happening. I just saw a protest going on at uh, in Anambra State. So concerning the uh, high tariff Governor Saludo just brought in. So yeah. in the sense that on the video I watched, so uh, the police came in, start shooting on the air when there is no any of the protesters that are holding any gun. These are just peaceful protesters. He's now charging them that they are going to be paying monthly the sum of um, 15,000 Naira every month. So which means it's no longer by the daily, you know, as they're paying before. I think some of them are paying 300 or 400 thereabouts. So, which means if somebody now, you know, went to Bera, to the village, whether you come back, you know, maybe in the next one month, you are still going to pay every month. So these are what are they are protesting over there. So now, 
you can see how Soludo, Governor Soludo, one of our governor in the Southeast, is causing, you know, um, violence in the society. As, as he claimed to be a professor or a graduate or CBM governor, instead of bringing solution, he's now bringing division. He sack all the Aburu people. Uh, instead of calling the, you know, um, those people who are working there to have a table meeting with them and sort things out, all what he can do is, is to send police and military men to start shooting. And before you know it, they can now start shooting still bullet to innocent civilians. Is it not exactly. demonic? So these are the part of the people who are causing demonization in our region because it is quite you know unclear that there are the people inviting the military people that the people inviting a lot so if now revolution starts happening in anambra it can escalate to so many other places and they can also say you know they can also tag their agitators they have now hijacked the protest just like the um accusers during the answers that would we infiltrated the you know the agitations of the Nigerians, which we are, you know, as of today, we have not been a nation, so we are still Nigerians. So, but for them to come all over where they are, start shooting innocent people, it is uncultural, and this is not democracy, it is autocracy. So, it is time to take the bull by its horn. So, right on, my comrade. As well as thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, that update. That is what we are. That, that is what we are saying, and what we are saying. Just imagine, somebody who is supposed to protect his own people, an educated person, supposedly educated person. Yeah. Look at the way he's reacting to civilians, people who are just protesting. What has the shooting of gun got to do with people who are protesting? Giving their opinion. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to discuss with them. And this is the person they are telling us that is going to is going to stand for you and speak for you. Just like they are talking about P2P today. Yes. The same way they, are, they, they, the same way they campaign for, for uh, uh, Ludo, they say, give him a chance. Let's give him a chance. He At least he was speaking for Biafra. He loved Biafra. He had Biafra in mind. I used to say that whenever you see anybody contesting anything based on that name called Nigeria, that person is evil. Stay away from yeah. such person. It doesn't matter the post you are contesting for. From local government chairman to the presidency, anybody that you see pursuing any career based on that name, based on that very name, that, that very name, Nigeria, run away from that very person. Run away for your life because they don't mean well for you. I don't know how you expect somebody to go and take an oath, an oath based on a, an oath that says that you must continue to be a third class citizen. And oath that have made you a slave that you are, you expect somebody to go and take that oath and then begin to do favor you. How is it possible? It's not possible, man. How is it possible? It's not possible. But when we say it, you know, when we say certain things we say here, people will say because we are saying it on social media, they say you are you don't know what you are saying, or maybe you are peddling lies. Or, but most of the things we say here have been said in their conventional media. You see people come on the commission, they, they say the same thing we are saying. But the difference is that we are not just saying it, we are implementing what we are saying. Yes. You will see them, they come to the conventional media. You will include our Sanjo, we come and tell you that he wants a Nigeria where there will be peace and unity, a Nigeria where everybody will be poor. They say they want a Nigeria, but it must be a Nigeria where everybody will. Where are you going to find a Nigeria where there will be quality? Where is that Nigeria? Where? Our Sanjo himself that is talking about uh in nigeria that can be worked out for unity during his own mm -hmm. term did he want unity to reign is he not the same person that sent soldiers to go and cause genocide in one community <laughs> in riverine area understand to clear out the whole community basically mm -hmm. because they are fighting they are they are protesting for equity and he did not give them amnesty now had it been that he have called them earlier Propose to them amnesty. They wouldn't go extra mile doing any kidnapping or doing any, you know, or doing any other thing. So exactly. after killing them now, one of the general that came out from that same zone asked Obasanjo, "Who are those soldiers? 
that went there and do cause this havoc. Up till today, Obasanjo could not be able to tell him. So oh, no the truth of the matter is, yeah, or no soldier. So the truth of the matter is that all the things that has been happening, nobody has been held responsible because yes, it is true that Obasanjo was the president which immunity covered him. Where are you going to sue him? Is it in the Nigerian court? Can you get justice? Because that is one of the reasons why so many international leaders have said that Nigeria does not have, um, you know, a um, structure whereby the dead themselves can base on to remove somebody who is not doing well. Uh, this is not democracy in existence. What we, are, what we are seeing in Nigeria is autocracy, where a governor can even come out of the street, you know, using police people. I just saw one video like that during 2020 lockdown, Governor Wike with some tax force, you know, coming down by himself. Exactly. <laughs> enforcing I saw the video. I saw the video. <laughs> enforcing the law, you know, Asking so many people, where are you going? You, uh -huh, arrest him, take his car, do this. Blah, blah. <laughs> that is not democracy, my dear. That is just uh, to show you that he is not acting based on God. He's not a God. Understand? Yeah. So, and that is, it is because that the law of Nigeria, you know, actually bred criminals. And when they see white, they always turn it to be black. So, this country needs another opportunity to decide whether they are going to continue as an entity or they are going to go to their separate way. If you look at the outcome of the court, uh, of the Northern um, you know, suit, that you know, they sued for Biafran referendum and other people who yeah. also want to know if they can still be remain in Nigeria or if they are going mm -hmm. to exit. It has been postponed until next, um, next October. Uh -huh, until October 4th. But so now, however, all this is a propaganda. These people that brought this court, is it not the Northerners? Okay, let's assume now, the letter now will draw the petition after the election. What happened? All these things are criminals. They are 419. They know what they're doing. The government used so many people to sponsor a lot of things. So I'm not even believing in, in that petition. Because you can never get justice as long oh, as God, Britain the, the and Saudi Arabia are consigned. You know, last time I was analyzing that Saudi Arabia are part of the people who are ruling this country. You know, one of our brother that was there on that video, you know, that first day. Asking, so am I now saying that it is Saudi Arabia that is, you know, that is ruling this country no more than Britain? He doesn't understand that Britain was represented by Lord Lugard, while Saudi Arabia was represented by Usman Donfordio in 1804. And in 1806, Lord Lugard came in. So two of them combined together, which means Saudi Arabia and UK. The book I told you about has all the evidences. This is not, you know, them say, this one say, uh -huh, this one right. This one is evidence of letter how right. they also sponsor terrorism from the beginning this Boko Haram you are hearing in the book there is one of the time they send some people giving them money from Saudi Arabia parliament the letter came from Saudi Arabia parliament understand now asking them to go and make sure they they punish one pastor that that made one of their member to repent as a Muslim and become a Christian understand so they said the such thing cannot happen before their own eyes that they must punish them oh they kicked him out the facebook have kicked him out they didn't want him to continue so that is the situation this very story he's telling now i posted a video on my page i posted a video on my page before i came online on that video that i posted if you can go and watch that video i posted on my page before i came online you will see somebody who was saying exactly what he's saying. And that information was released on the conventional media. It was a press interview. AIT was there. B uh, what they call it, Channel Television was there. 
where the guy was talking about the instruction that was given to the uh, to, to the to the House of Fulani Muslims in Nigeria. The instruction that was given to them that should they, they should make sure that every leading political party in Nigeria has their political candidate, had their their presidential candidate as a Muslim. They should make it mandatory. An instruction that was given to them, and that instruction came all the way from Saudi Arabia. Go and watch the video. I posted a video before I came online. If I came online, that was a video I posted. You scroll, you will see the video I posted. You will see where the man was telling the charge that was given to these people to make sure, to make sure that the presidential candidate of every political party, every major political party, they should make sure that the presidential presidential candidate is from uh, is, is, is a Muslim. So what this my brother is saying is exactly what is happening. It is the truth and nothing but the truth. But you see people, they will continue to shy away from it. They will continue to dance around it. They will continue to pretend as if they, they have not had it. But that's the obvious truth, and it will continue to stare to you at your face. But the state that we are now, the Air France are taking the bull by the horn. We cannot be deceived anymore. They cannot cajole us or push us into their election. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. The declaration has been made. And I thank Chukwu Kagadiam for where we are today. Chukwu Kagadiam has started his sanitization. First of all, he started removing those people that is going to be a hindrance. Those people that have price tag on them. Chukwu Kagadiam has removed every one of them. Just like the, the message I preached here, was it in Broca Samir yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, about price tag. People that put price tag on themselves. All those Biafra that have price tag, tag on them, Chukwu Kagadiam has removed them. The few of them that are still remaining, even in autopilot, if there are a few that are remaining, let me tell you, in a twinkle of an eye, they're going to disappear. They'll be exposed. There are still some few people, even in autopilot, there might still be some few people hiding one place or the other. They will be exposed and they'll be taken out because the state that we are now taking the move by the home. The people who are in charge, they are unbribable. Unbribable. Mazin Nandekan used to say it, that there are people who are unbribable. Mazim Nanakan said it. He himself is unbribable. Mazim Nanakan is unbribable. Anything you can offer a human being on the planet Earth to make them change their mind have been offered to Mazim Nanakan. But he remains still. He remains still. Eziago, Eziafa, Kamakariego. Good name is better than wealth. Good name is better than wealth. Mazim Nanakan is unbribable. He rejected every offer. Including all you well and vice presidential seat, he rejected everything. He rejected it and offered that all this, all this, all these clowns running around as politicians, we never they will look not think twice before they will accept it. But he rejected it, he maintained his name, and that is why today his name has become a household name. His name has become a household name. When you mention Martin Nandi, can change his come. When you mention Mazin Nanikan, anywhere in the world today, mention Mazin Nanikan, people will turn around and look at you. When you call his name, when you use his picture, anything that concerns him that you use, people are going to turn around and look at you. He has become a very great brand on the planet Earth, a brand that people emulate. That is why you see some people capitalizing on that brand, a brand that Chukwu Kabyon have built on him because of how, how consistent and diligent he is. Because of how consistent and diligent it is, Chukwu Kabyon gave him that grace. Today, you see some people using that grace, that, that image that Mazda Kabyon created. They are using it for their own evil, evil agenda. Some are using it to chase money. Some are using it for, to blackmail. Some are using it to preach lie. Some are using it to preach their, pursue their own selfish agenda. Forgetting that very thing, that very thing that that man, you are using his picture, you are playing his video, you forgot that thing that he's asking for. Mazin Nandekano is not asking for anything apart from the freedom of Biafran people. He wants Biafran to be free. He wants every indigenous tribe, not only Biafran, every indigenous tribe in the contraption called Nigeria to be free. In extension, Mazin Nandekano wants every black race, every black man in the planet uh, to be free. He also wants every human being to have to be equal, to have that equality, to practice what you want to practice, do what you want to do. Live where you want to live. Do anything you want to do without obstruction. That is the desire of the man we are following, Mazin Nandikano. That is why today he is a brand. 
a brand that everybody is looking at. Only Martin Nanakano name and picture alone is feeding a lot of people. Martin Nanakano name and picture is feeding a lot of people today online. He's putting food on so many people's table. It didn't just happen accidentally. He built that standard for himself. He built that brand. And today, Chukwu Kagabu have exalted him. The savior of our time. And you see people today, some of them are using his name for evil, using his message to pursue their own selfish interests, using his message to push evil agenda. But those of us in autopilot, we are building on the foundation of Mazen Nandika. And remember, the memory verse we have here, consistency is the key. We don't want anything from anybody except Biafra. And Biafra we must have. All we are asking for is Biafra. Our freedom, that's what we're asking. We don't want any other thing from anybody. We are not asking for anything. All we need is freedom. Give us our freedom. Self-determination. Our legitimate rights. We are not looking to occupy anybody. We are not looking to rule anybody. We are not going to take anybody's land. We are not going to take the life of anybody. All we are asking is conduct a referendum so that we can decide our fate. After the referendum, if majority Biafran people decide to be in the, in the, in the contraption, we remain there. No problem about that. So why are you scared of the referendum? Why don't you conduct the referendum? You have an ample time to control the referendum before your election. Conduct the referendum. That should be, if the, if the country of Nigeria is a meaningful country, if it's a country that has the people in their mind, when you check that 99.9% .9 of people in Biafra land, including the Udua land, they want a referendum, why don't you give them a referendum? Give them a referendum. But they wouldn't do so because of their evil agenda, because they want to steal, to kill, and to destroy, as the devil does. The work of the devil and the plan of the devil is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that is what they want to do. They are coming to steal our land. They have stolen our resources for a very long time. They have been stealing our resources. We don't even care. They steal our resources and left us with nothing. In Biafra land, you see Biafra land underdeveloped. Underdeveloped with all the resources they are stealing from there. The southern part of Nigeria, stealing everywhere they see if they steal. That, as if that is not enough, now they want to steal the land itself. They want to steal the land itself, and the way they want to steal the land is by committing genocide, taking the indigenous people. They have done that in the north, and they succeeded, and nobody cares. They have done it in the north, and they succeeded. They wiped away an entire area. People were wiped away. The village, they renamed. They renamed the village, and they built their own houses. As they are there. Up to today, as you're watching the video, they are there. They are there, and nobody reacted. No government reacted, not to do anything in a way. People still continue to go about their business as nothing happened. And even if you leave this election and it happens, it will continue. The, the destruction will continue. It doesn't matter when you put it there. Even if you like put it over, the first year of it will be the first hundred days, what it's going to do is to come and attack IPOB. What it's going to do is to send jet fighter to Biafra land to kill Biafrans. This is why we must not allow that. We cannot allow them. We can't allow it. If they want to put him, if they want to go and vote him in, the, in Lagos, vote him in Lagos or vote him in, in the North, they should vote him and put him in. But we cannot allow anybody in Biafra land to put his signature to endorse anything that has to do with presidency in Biafra land. It will not be endorsed. Biafra land will not be part of it. We will never, ever be part of it. We have tried a lot. We have, they have exhausted all the chances. And such chance cannot come anymore. It can't come again. That is why you must have to wake up. We are taking the bull by the horn. Every single Biafra, not only Biafra, including other indigenous tribes that want their freedom. Any indigenous tribe, our Dudua brother, the middle Bertans, including the houses, every single one of us that is indigenous, you have to wake up, stand up, and take the bull by the horn. And the time is now. This is a golden opportunity for you to get your freedom. Every one of us, we have to stand up once. Master Nanaka said, stand once. And when we stand once, they are not match. They can't match us anywhere. They can never be a match. They cannot match us. When we rise up once, when we rise up once, they cannot match us. In any one, by any status, they can never match us. 
all we need to do is to rise up once. They don't have enough forces to focus on the Dudua land, focus on the middle bed, focus on Biafra. They can't do it. They are not our match. The statistics is clear. We have all of it. It is high time everyone stand up, take the bull by the horn once and for all, and straighten this and let everybody have their freedom. It is we that will save ourselves. Nobody's going to save you. No international community, no African Union, nobody. You, you yourself, take the bull by the horn and save yourself. You're yeah, welcome back, my brother. The network is really giving you a tough time. Yes, my dear. I think it also includes Facebook because they restricted yeah, exactly. me. Yeah, some next they just pick you up. That, I know. They do it to me also. They send me a notification. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm back now. You're welcome back. So, um, we must continue. Yes, my dear. Yeah. So, just like I was saying about the, you know, um, the evil of Asanjo supported to create in this country. Look at somebody like Dangote, one of our persons that could have helped to develop the East. The label him that he was the one supplying weapons to Masov and they seize his license. So now it now become only Dangote that was licensed to supply cement. Now you cannot know where all his wealth came from. How many Igbos has been given license in terms of shell to sell shells through banks? Only Dangote. That's how he started. So this is no longer marginalization. It is now, you know, demonization. All our tough men that have demonized them. Look at somebody like Obi Kubana. Understand? All these people, I'm just still wondering, and you know, you know, I'm still thinking, why are they not coming up to gather together to discuss how we are going to rescue ourselves? It is not that Igbo doesn't have people who can do something. Why, exactly. why are they all running out? Hmm? These are the people that could have made Igbo land look more than Dubai. Understand, but but Nigeria cannot even allow them to do such. Anything they import, they seize it. You can see all the cars our people are importing. They seize it and they now sell it on auction. Is it not criminal? Okay, criminal now let me now just give you a guess. They seize rice, bag of rice that are being imported, and the same government that seized also sell that same rice. They seize cars that are being imported. They even give us range, the kind of car they are going to import. Understand? So if you do not import the other one, they seize it. And yes. after seizing it, they do not destroy it or deposit it. it. They will still sell it. And they will still make money out of it. Is mm -hmm. it not embezzling the peoples from the East? And most of the people that are doing this business are people from the East. Unless that you get that, you know, a license from Dangote to make importation, you know, Dangote make a lot of money out of our Eastern people. Without paying if tax, you do not that want, that. without paying tax, of course, if you do not want your, you know, your product or your container to be seized, you must use his license. When you use his license, you are going to be, you know, get a free access. Now you can now see how all the money he continued making happen. Obasanjo gave him chance. And Atiku, they give him a lot, you know, Atiku was former, um, is it not um, custom, officer. Um, custom officer, retired custom. So it is the plan of Atiku and uh, this man Dangute to do all this evil against our people. Look at Bakasi Penistal. During Obasanjo, there was a court ruling. And what Obasanjo Lieutenant told us um, that he did not know that Atiku was fighting for his own fatherland. So Obasanjo as a president could not have chance, could not have any space to do it by himself, except Atiku. How can now number second man becoming now number one? And all what Obasanjo can now tell us is he did not know that Atiku is fighting for his fatherland.
which means Nigeria is not the fatherland of Atiku. And the same person that won in 2019, all the Northerners are saying he is not in Nigeria. He's not, they they yeah. even sued him to court that, that, that he's not in Nigeria. And yeah. they even said that he did not win. Okay, you do not win. Why are, they, why are you then suing him to court that, that, that he's not in Nigeria? Yeah. That is just to show you how sabotage they are all. Just because that an Igbo happened to be his vice. So they could not allow an Igbo man again to come in the middle. So they have to ask Atuku to wait that they can, you know, let, let your brother finish. So mm -hmm. it is now, now, I, I mean, now, now they are now telling us Atuku is going to take over after a northerner has been president, a northerner have to remain president. This is one to that be done. So all Biafrans should wake up. This is the time for us to leave Nigeria. By the grace of school, this time will not take us unaware. You, you have seen all their plan. You have seen all what they have doing um, for Tinubu to pick ticket of, you know, Muslim, Muslim ticket. Why is it being done on a secular society? They said that there is nothing like Islamic agenda. But so many of the state are um, you know, they are practicing Sharia law. Already? They are practicing Sharia law. Exactly. And even in Abuja, we are talking about being the center of the whole federation. They also want to impose the Sharia law to happen in all the region. So why should we be one when it is called secular state? And you want to use Sharia law to imprison a Christian somebody who didn't believe in your own religion. The, the, the immediate past uh, attorney general of the federation, or should I say chief justice, did he read about Nigerian law? No. What he read? He read Islamic law. law. Tanko, tanko it's Islamic legal. law. <laughs> so how can somebody who read a different religion law come now to rule a Christian. Is it not an abomination? What did he know about Christianity? How can he balance justice and equity? Are yet to wake up from your slumber or your sleep and get the point that we are exiting Nigeria. Exiting Nigeria is not going to come from the platter of Godi plate. You have to sacrifice for it. And we are ready to sacrifice everything, including you. If you come and stand in the way of freedom. So you need to know how serious we are. We are damn serious. Some of you are not getting it. You think we are here to, to make to build political movement? We are here for freedom. Freedom come with price. Okay? The only thing you can do is to comment on social media. Don't ever stand on the way of Biafra freedom. We we'll crush you. Their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold the whole of Africa down. <laughs> hey, if we don't fight things, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am a Nam Kano. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you're not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. I have to everywhere. We must continue.